and it is a, it's a safety issue. Hey everyone, I'm Dan Jackson and this is my channel, Dan's the Engineer. I thought I'd start doing a few vlogs. Um, a few people have asked me if I can do a few of those, show what I do sort of in the week and whatever. So I thought I'd give it a go and see, see how it goes. Um, so just sort of going to talk about the things that I've been up to and what I'm going to be doing in the next couple of weeks. So I am always busy. It is crazy. Um, I oversee what um, my engineers do, um, I sort of assist with commissioning of fire alarm systems, I oversee testing, um, price work, surveys and general sort of company business bits and pieces so I'm all over, no day is the same, um, it's pretty exciting, I can be working from home one day in the office the next and I could be in Manchester the next day uh, or somewhere in Kent or you know it, it, the list goes on. So. Uh, yesterday I done, it, the day consisted mainly of EV charge point surveys for customers, um, mainly in domestic environments, so I think I had six all in all. Um, but one thing that's uh, massively concerning me is um, that one site, um, one particular client, uh, absolutely lovely house, a uh, lovely guy he's had a uh, another company out to sort of go through the charge point and he's actually got the quote so um, he said he sort of knows a bit about you know about them because the last guy spoke so what concerned me was that when I sort of said to him that we've got to install an earth rod because the charge point is outside and it's a TNCS a PME earthing system and he he was he was like oh I didn't know that the other guy didn't say that and I was like, does it say out in a quote? And he didn't show me the quote for obvious reasons, but it doesn't show installing an earth rod whatsoever. Now, it's an additional sort of safety feature because basically you've got a big lump of metal outside, opens the elements, and if there's a particular type of fault, if you lost the income of neutral, all the earth's going to become live. It's, it's pretty basic stuff, if you ask me. Um, so for, for a safety point of view, I would not install an EV charge point at my house without an earth rod if it was outside with those increased risks. So that concerns me. Mm. Second of all, um, I asked to see the water and the gas, um, like the main pipe work to see if it was earth bonded. Um, neither is earth bonded. Um, they're not particularly difficult to earth bond, so it's not going to be a massive cost to the client, but this guy's had an extension with you know, loads of extra sockets, loads of lights. He's had a new fuse board. It's, it's brand new. It's um, an MK, you know, amendment-free metal enclosure. Why the hell are the, the water and the gas not bonded? I, I just can't get my head around it. And he says he's got paperwork and all sorts. Now, that basically means that the contractors who done that electrical work aren't, you know, working to the regulations and to the, you know, the best practices. And it is a, it's a safety issue. So, you know, I didn't want to scare the guy, but at the same time, I just can't help but feel that, you know, he's been sort of done over by sort of cowboy. It's real basic stuff. And the thing is, when I was explaining to him why it's got to be done, he said, that's absolutely great. No one said that to me before. We need you to come in and, and get and do it, whatever it costs. It costs. You can't put a price on the safety. Now, you know, we're not going to rip the guy off. It's value for money and it's safety. I just don't get it. And um, this board that had been changed, um, it'd been changed over, metal board, and it had um, open grommets in the top. Uh, a couple of them had no cables in them. You could put your finger in the fuse board, like literally, you could put your finger in the fuse board. It doesn't meet IP ratings. And what is the point of installing a fire rated metal fuse board if you've got massive holes in the top? The fire will spread. I just don't understand how contractors are doing this and getting away with it that, that that's the thing here they're not doing it properly and the truth is that those contractors in some cases are going to be cheaper so they would have got the job based on price and second of all some of them aren't cheaper they're actually quite expensive and they're still doing this so it just goes to show i mean you know you can have accreditations all you like because apparently this particular company have but you know at the end of the day you've got to go with a, a reputable sort of contractor so anyway, that's a rant um, about that. 
um, I will be doing some, you know, posting stuff on LinkedIn about EV charge points. I'm thinking of doing an article um, about surveys as well, just to sort of give people some more information because it's quite still quite new technology still, but I do feel there's some safety issues in how some people are doing it. So um, just want to sort of highlight that to a few people because ultimately I don't want anybody to get hurt or die and I want people to do things how they're supposed to be done. So in other news, um, I've got my BAFE inspection in the next couple of weeks. Um, so I've got to do a little bit of, uh, but it's only the office audit. So my BAFE inspection is done with the SSAIB. I have um, two visits a year. Um, one every six months, one's office based, one is on site. So they go and we, you know, they pick a few jobs and go and have a look. So I've got, um, yeah, prepare, get all the paperwork ready for them. What I do is basically set up a desk. Um, they can look on a computer, I give them a file, folder and they can go through whatever they want. And if they want any information, I just dump it on it. So they, you know, we spend a day doing that. So I've got that coming up. I'm going to see Apollo Fire down in, um, Haven't. I think that's how you say it. Haven't. Haven. Haven't. I'm um, going to see them next week, uh, look at some of their products and go through, um, you know, some of the stuff. And um, I've got some queries, actually, because there's a few jobs. I've got uh, beam detectors that need um, specifying. So I'm going to talk to um, their technical guy, Warren Moyles, about um, some of that. So I've got that coming up. And, uh, yeah, basically, um, the list goes on with with what's going on right now. I've done uh, recently done a video on um, the testy fire, fire alarm uh, test equipment, which does heat, smoke, and CO, if you get the right model. Um, if not, the 1000 model only does the smoke and the heat. So I've posted that video. Um, it's pretty, I was quite impressed with the testy fire uh, test equipment. I've, I've mainly just used a solo range. Uh, which, you know, they're all good at the end of the day. Testifier and Solo, they're, they're both great bits of kit, but I was, I was quite impressed with the, the Testifier, actually. So um, it's, I suppose it's just what you're used to. Um, they both have their advantages and disadvantages, but the main advantage about the Testifier is it, it's one bit of equipment. You don't you haven't got to take loads of different heads around. But, yeah, it's good. Um, so check that video out. I'll put a, a little link at the top um, so you can look at that. And, um, yeah, so I've got... Got a few surveys. Um, we we our guys are installing a lot of MICC cabling. I've po again I've posted stuff on um, LinkedIn about this, but um, a lot of jobs we do are historical properties. It could be churches, it could be um, you know listed buildings um, for the public, and that's that's a that's a large part of what we do. And there seems to be a sort of a, I don't know. Some people have, you know messaged me asking if they can sort of. Um, you know shadow one of our guys so they can learn how to do MICC because in colleges you know it's a bit of a dying trade but a lot of our guys it's like second nature that's that's what they do I mean I I can still make off MICCs probably be a bit rusty these days but um, I'd love the cable it's brilliant cable don't get me wrong it is expensive but it's got to be used for the right application and if you're installing it on wood and stone and stuff like that um, like bare MICC looks absolutely incredible and I love seeing like when it goes in because it's all nice and shiny and then you go back a year later and it's all dulled down to the sort of colours of its surrounding so um, great cable absolutely great cable um, it, it's funny actually because we've got a few clients that they actually it's their specification to rip it out in their properties because no one can work on it so with some clients we're ripping it out but other clients we're whacking it you know loads of it in so it's quite funny how it goes actually but great cable. Um, I, I'm I'm thinking of doing a video also on um, just a, a quick little guide on making one off, like making a, a pot off and seal, just to you know give um, people a bit of an insight on how to do it. And it, and you know it, it's worth having a bit of a play yourself. However, buying a roller cable is expensive. It's not cheap. So you know um, yeah we always have offcuts to be honest. If anybody wants any and you're local, you're more than welcome to have like a meter offcut to have a play. In other news, also got our NIC, um, EIC annual inspection and audit. So that assessment's coming up. Um, I think we've got a range of dates. It's not set in stone yet. So we've got that coming up. So I've got to sort of um, get us access into a few jobs that they can go around and see. And uh, yeah, so I look forward to that. That's, uh, the year goes so quick. It's ridiculous. So um, yeah, we're, we're NIC approved. Um, so I'll give them a handful of jobs that they can look at that we can sort of get into. Um, we work in a lot of hospitals, 
historical buildings, um, offices, you, you know, you name it. Uh, some are a bit of a pain getting in, to be honest, because a lot of the work we do is out of hours. Um, so we, it's all very well taking an, uh, you know, the assessor to somewhere, that an install we've done, but we can't actually test it. So, um, so yeah, we'll see. We'll see how that goes. Um, and I'm continuing to speak to various you know people in the industry whether it's electrical or fire about how we can all sort of work together about maintaining standards and keep it well keeping standards high because um i just feel that when i'm going around doing surveys i'm just seeing more and more of poor quality work it's it's getting it's, you know it's getting a bit of a joke how 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 bad it is um and you know i'll, I'll say to our clients at the end of the day um, I'll point out, but it'll always be from a safety perspective. Don't get me wrong, if something looks a bit rubbish, it looks a bit rubbish. That's not unsafe. That'll just be a personal opinion of saying it looks crap. But at the same time, if someone's installing something that looks really crap, is it safe in terms, if you broke it down, look at connections and stuff like that with things they've done? You know, I can tell a good electrician just by the fuse board that they've made off and terminated. You can seriously tell a lot just, just from that. So, you know, it goes to show, um, you know, you can tell. And yes, I'm, I'm, uh, a lot of my clients come to me because we, we do promote high standards of work and doing things properly. And ultimately, it's in their interest because the client is the duty holder. It's their property. Or, or if it's a domestic environment and they're a homeowner, it's in their interest because their family are living in that house. That's how I look at it. I would not get a gas safe engineer that is reputable and has, um, you know, is known in the area or something like that working on my, you know, gas in my house because I've got children. And it's, it's like my boiler. I wouldn't just get, you know, Joe Bloggs down the road or whatever to do it. I'll look into it, research. It's called due diligence at the end of the day. And it's no real different with, you know, commercial environments. So the duty holder is the person that, ultimately is responsible if something goes wrong so therefore that you know that's why people come to us and um but it always comes down to cost at the end of the day um to, to a lot of play to a lot of clients it comes down to cost so it's got to be that sort of balance but you can't you know you can't put a price on safety at the end of the day and that that's my biggest gripe it's it's seeing things that are unsafe you know that that's that's sort of the issue so yeah, I'll be doing some, you know, more vlogs, more videos coming up. I've got a few more fire alarm demos popping up. A few people have requested some stuff. I'm going to see if I can do various, you know, panels that people have requested. It's not that easy because I have to find a site that has it. So not all do. Um, so yeah, um, hopefully I'm going to try and do vlogs once a week if possible. See how it goes. If they get, you know, if people enjoy watching them and they're relevant to people, then I'll continue and. Yeah, we'll see, see how that goes. Thanks for watching this vlog. I look forward to the next one. Please subscribe if you haven't done so already. Goodbye.